Thank you, Dana. Well, as she didn't say, but she was kind of alluding to in that introduction, I'm also the fool that they convinced to uh, <laughs> follow Freeman and Hadowski. Um, you know, I, I think it is, first, it's a great honor to meet Dr. Hrabowski, and, and I think it's entirely appropriate that he is here speaking before all of you today because he is truly, uh, without a doubt, uh, one of America's great educators. And today he is speaking before a room of North Carolina's great educators. And, and if you don't believe that, I could run through some of the statistics that some of the board and I saw today, but I'm not going to do that because I think what he illustrated too is part of education and one of the greatest parts is telling stories. Numbers are important, math are important, but one of the most important ways you relay what you do is through stories, and his life is certainly a story. Uh, one of the things I noted today that impressed me in this Summer Institute, and this is, I've been to several, I guess all of the Summer Institutes, but looking through it, uh, just reading the sessions, but the title in terms of powerful teaching and learning, a personal journey, a personal journey. As you look through what, what is in the book and what we talk about, uh, and, and what you've been spending your time with, it, I, I hearken back to the early days of New School, and ultimately, if you'll recall, we always went back to the three R's. The three R's. We weren't talking about reading, writing, arithmetic, but we were talking about rigor, which is what Dr. Hrabowski taught, and relevance, and relationships. Rigor, relevance and relationships. And as you look through this book, you see that. I mean, you see that in the sessions you're attending, and you particularly see rigor, and you particularly see relation, relevance, but you don't see as much as relationships. And the reason for that, I think, and you're talking about right brain and left brain, but there's also, there's, heart, there's head and there's heart. And for me, when I have seen, I think there is a difference between being just a, a very effective teacher a very effective administrator and being a great educator. And the difference is, to me, the relationships. And that's ultimately about what it is about the heart. And I think when I've had a chance to interact with you, that is truly, to me, of all the three, that's the secret sauce. And so I want to talk a little bit just about that. And Dr. Hrabowski shared somewhat his personal journey here. If you had a chance, some of you have seen the 60 Minutes session. And if if you watch that, um, one of the things you saw is, while well, he is a man who preaches rigor, he preaches rigor, and he ties in relevance wherever there is, but you watch him interact, let's say you did with Isaac, but you watch him interact around UMBC, and he is a man of relationships, and ultimately that is what makes the difference. And I think why people ha care the way they do is often a part of their personal journey. His personal journey is even comes throughout his name. Now, real quickly, he told a story. I'll tell you a little story for me. We all have personal journeys. And in all of our lives, there are tipping points, as I were. People who, we, who because of what they did, we are where we are today. For me, in my life, that was my grandfather. I point to him as a tipping point. He had a different southern story, if you will. He grew up way back in the hills of North Carolina, in the, or in Tennessee, actually, and so far back in the hills of North Carolina, he was actually in Tennessee. <laughs> I didn't realize the Smoky Mountains went so far back till I went to that part of Tennessee. But when he was my son's age, his namesake's age, the sawmills dried up and they moved to a textile mill town. But something that he did that I will always point back to is the tipping point for me, having started working in the textile mills in the equivalent of the eighth grade, is he made sure that both of his sons went to college, but even more importantly for me, and very uniquely, he made sure that both of his daughters went to college, one a community college and one my mother who went to a teaching college. Now, what I bring that up to you is I know that if it wasn't for the grace of God and a man named Ben, I'm not standing here right now. And today when I dropped his little namesake off at basketball camp, one of the things I think about is that 
the challenges we have is making sure our kids, whether they be our kids or our students, understand and appreciate education when they have all the opportunities, just a little bit as much as some of those who appreciate because they did not have the opportunity. And the other thing is to make sure that when we demonstrate we care and we talk about rigor, that if we don't emphasize rigor, it shows we may not care enough. We may not care enough. Now, one of the things I want to congratulate you, and I speak on behalf of uh, uh, one of the original members of the board of directors here, is I want to thank you all for caring and the difference that you make. And you see that in the statistics, but I want to tell you a quick story. I had a chance recently, one day, to interact with two of the recent graduates from new schools, from new schools programs. Uh, one of the things I noticed in the, in the statistics we reviewed today is almost half of the graduates last year finished with an associate's degree and a high school degree simultaneously. And I saw a lot of that because I went to some of the college graduations this year. Now, I had a chance to interact with two of those students one day when we recognized the 58 academic excellence award winners from the 58 community colleges. One of them was a kid named Montrell Cruz who he, he was from, there they are, there, now, now, there's, now there's some of Montreal's tipping points over there. <laughs> now, now this was just a, this kid just, I mean, his smile, he just attracted, he was just an amazing, you could tell he was an amazing kid. Came from, and let's face it, this is, your part of the world doesn't have all of the opportunity in other parts of the world, but Montreal, you know, he is in Chapel Hill now going to the University of North Carolina, and I struck up a little relationship with him. I told him, you call me when you get to Chapel Hill. Well, two weeks ago, I'm walking in the office, I'm in the middle of all the legislative stuff, and my assistant says, you had a call from Montreal Cruz, he said to call you. And I said, Montreal Cruz? And he said, yeah, he said he's in Chapel Hill. And I, and I picked up the phone call, or he was on the line, and he said, uh, Dr. Ross, this is Montreal. I'm in Chapel Hill, I'm doing what you told me to do. Now, I look forward to having a relationship with Montreal Cruz. I'll tell you another story real quickly. But there was a, a girl named Amelia Hawkins. Now, these are the folks from Caldwell right here. These are the tipping points from Caldwell right here. And Amelia's story, if I get this correct, is she moved 15 times before she was in the eighth grade, before settling, luckily for her, in the mountains of North Carolina. And Family circumstances, I think, necessitated that their family had to move again, but she hung on to that opportunity that she had. And she stayed behind and she lived with a friend. And so this past year, she graduated not only with her high school degree, but also, if I'm correct, her associate in arts degree from Caldwell and her associate in science degree from Caldwell. Well, you're clapping too early, you're clapping too early. And then next year, she's going to a full, on a full scholarship to study molecular biology at Princeton. Now, we can talk about all the statistics in the world, and it's about rigor, and it's about relevance, but at the end of the day, it's about relationships. And there were tipping points in all of our lives, but there was a tipping point, and there are tipping points that are sitting out here for Montreal, and there were tipping points that are sitting here for Amelia, and each of you are tipping points in that regard. And so while you can't really put, rel or put relationships into a session, you all are doing that. And ultimately, in my book, that's what is the secret sauce. And this is much more important, I think what Dr. Hrabowski proves is this is not just about education. This is about the American dream. This is about the American dream. So if you ever doubt, if, and when we get all worried and all tied up in knots that the American dream is not alive, you tell them it's alive at Caldwell and the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and at early colleges and STEM high schools and at community colleges and at universities and A&T all throughout this state and all throughout the country. But the American dream is ultimately about educational opportunity. And I want to thank you on behalf of the board for being that tipping point in your everyday lives working in these new schools because you are making a difference in terms of maintaining that American dream.
Thank you very much.